Hello everybody, it's Kara from Wild Book Garden and today I'm here with my spoiler-free reading vlog for The Curse of Chalion by Lois McMaster Bujold. Um, I will link the announcement if you missed it, but me and my friend Mariana Moss Books are doing a TBR swap, sort of. Um, we are each recommending a book to, to the other person that we really love and that we think that person could love as well. Um, I will link Mariana's channel down below as well as her announcement and um, her sort of like review or check-in when she has that up. Uh, so be sure to check that out to see what book I recommended for her and how she how she got on with it, what she thought. Um, but yeah, this is going to be my reading vlog for The Curse of Chalion. Um, as I said, there are going, going to be no spoilers in this, and I will also put content warnings in the description box. And let's just get into the clips! Hello everybody, I am here with my first check-in for The Curse of Chalion by Lois McMaster Bujold. I am about 70 pages in, um, and it's about 450 pages, so I'm, I'm like, I guess this is like first impressions, but also, like, I've read a little chunk of the book. I am really enjoying it so far. Um, I do love Casareal, just as Mariana thought. I do love the female friendship we have seen so far. Like, I know we're gonna get even more of that as the story goes on, but I already like what we're seeing, so, so far, so good. Mariana did an amazing job <laughs> picking a book for me. Um, so the setup is we are following Lord Casareal, who is returning after a lot of years as, um, as a soldier and as a prisoner. He was enslaved, like sold into slavery at one point, and so he obviously has been through a lot of traumatic things, and um, he is understandably very, very much still like broken from that or recovering from that, and so he kind of just wants like a quiet life. Like he's not that old, but he feels old because of like all these like things that he has gone through, um, and so he's looking to kind of find somewhere quiet to get a position and to just be able to, like, rest. Um, and so he ends up going to this noble house where um, a long time ago he served as a page, because it's basically the only person he can think of to go to who might uh, give him a position, and she does, but it's not the position he expected. He ends up becoming um, a kind of secretary tutor for these two young women, specifically for... She's sort of like a duchess or a princess, um, like she is the sister of the boy or young man who was like set to inherit and she is very intelligent, very strong-willed. Her and her like lady-in-waiting slash friend both are, um, and so it's hoped that Kazariel can kind of like like teach them and instruct them but also like you know take care of them or keep them safe and kind of try to rein them in sometimes because um, they get into a lot of a lot of mischief with potential for pretty serious consequences. Um, like not not just like playing around, but like they are doing, trying to do the right thing or they are doing the right thing, but they're just doing it in a way that is, again, dangerous or there's some potential for danger there. So at the point I'm at, he has started instructing these two young women um, and he's sort of like settling into the household and I am really enjoying this so far. It's so far like a very quiet kind of story. Like I can definitely see that we're ramping up the like political drama and everything, and I know that's going to be like an even bigger factor as the book goes on, um, but I'm also just enjoying like spending time with these characters. Like I love all of them. Like I love Kazariel. I also really love the Provencara, who is the, or I guess she's like the the dowager Provencara, um, who is sort of like the duchess, grand duchess? I don't know what a comparable word for her would be, uh, but she's the grandmother of um, the like heiress that Kazariel is tutoring. She's great. I really love her. Um, like I said, I love Isel and Beatrice, who are the two young women. Um, I love their friendship. I find the world really, really fascinating. Like, I really love the, like, religious system and the way that that is incorporated into the story. Like, this world of the five gods, which I know that Lois McMaster Bujold has written, like, multiple series in. Um, and so that's super interesting. I'm really enjoying the world building. Um, yeah, I'm just like having a really great time with this one so far. I am excited to keep reading. I don't know how many check-ins I'm going to do for this little vlog here, but we will see. I'm loving it so far. Hello everybody, I am back with an update for The Curse of Chalion. I just finished chapter 11, um, so I'm not quite 200 pages through, and I'm enjoying this so much. I actually, this might be a shorter update <laughs> than, uh, than my updates sometimes are because I kind of want to just get back to reading it because I am at a very stressful part, a very intense part, I should say, um, because I'm not actually as stressed as I would have thought. And the reason for that is I feel like already, just from reading, you know, part of one book, I feel like Lois McMaster Bujold is an author 
that at least so far I feel like I can trust to do things right for the story. Like not necessarily that I'm always gonna like every choice she makes, but that she won't she won't do things in a way that feels forced or that feels like cheap trauma porn um, like some fantasy authors do. So I am just very invested and like, yeah, just I, I love these characters. Um, we're definitely into the more like political, like high stakes situation now. Um, and I said that like I was having a good time just kind of hanging out with the characters and that is true, but also I'm enjoying, like I like political fantasy anyway, but I'm enjoying specifically following these characters navigating that even more than I expected to. Um, I, I still love Kazariel. I keep wanting to call him Kaz for some reason, even though I don't think anybody in the book nicknames him Kaz. Um, but I still really like Kazariel. I still really like Isel and Beatrice. Um, there's some other supporting characters that I'm also invested in. Um, yeah, I think the world building is still fantastic and I really am impressed at how like as we move through the story we're getting that built out even more um like about like the the world of the five gods and um how those beliefs differ from like some neighboring regions and it's just super interesting um there is a bit of an age gap romance developing the trope i am very picky with um but so far i feel like it's being done in a way that i don't mind like i i really like both these characters and i do like the idea of them together we haven't gotten a ton of like movement on that front yet. Um, there are some like slightly odd descriptions around the relationship that I think, I don't know, that are not my favorite, but like in general, um, I'm just like enjoying the characters and their relationships and um, also specifically even with a trope I don't usually like or I don't often like, I still think that relationship is interesting. I do like the writing. The only thing is there's just like a tiny little thing about the writing that I can't put my finger on and it just makes it feel sometimes a little bit not stilted. I don't know what word I'm thinking of. Like I really like the writing and it's very well done. I guess like it feels a little bit like the best way I can think to describe it is like this, the writing of this book should have taken off one accessory before leaving the house. <laughs> I think that's a Coco Chanel quote who she was terrible but um I feel like the comparison is what this book this book's writing is making me think of. Um, but yeah, really loving it. I'm gonna get back to reading and I don't know, like my plan is that I was gonna do maybe one more check-in and then talk at the end. So basically two more updates. Um, but I don't know, maybe you'll just see me when I finish the book. Who can say? Okay, I'm gonna go read. <laughs> Hello everybody, I am here with what I'm pretty sure is going to be my penultimate check-in uh, for The Curse of Chalion. I am, let's see, I'm pretty far. Um, I'm a little over 300 pages in, so I have actually, I think I have even less than I thought. I have like 130 pages left or something and things are happening <laughs> with capital letters. Um, I'm still very much enjoying this. I'm very invested. Um, I am liking the political aspect a lot and I just really enjoy seeing these characters who are smart and compassionate and like doing their best and like I don't know, it's just I really <laughs> I really want to see them succeed and that's nice. Also, I have mentioned that like I am in fact really enjoying the friendship between Beatrice and Isel, which is one of the specific things that Mariana uh, said I would enjoy and she is 100% correct. Um, so I am really liking that and something that I find very impressive is that even though the main character, like the perspective character we're following, the only perspective character is Casariel. I feel like we still get such a good idea of how much these women mean to each other and rely on each other and it feels very like organic that we are are getting glimpses of these things but also that there are um you know there's like a lot of time when the two of them are with like their waiting women and everything and like so Kazriel's not there um but like with all the moments that we do see him interact with them it's like we just see how like all of these characters like including Kazriel like they all um just really rely on each other like when he is there to witness it we obviously like see their friendship um as well um but also because of how well written these characters are and just like the writing in general being so good we also can like feel the friendship or like we know the friendship is happening even when it's not on page and i think that's very cool um like just very well done i will say that one thing i am not loving is there is an aspect of the sort of like supernatural threat in this book that is like kind of gross 
<laughs> in the way that it like affects people's like bodies like the I don't know like the medical aspects were not something like I know people have mentioned it in reviews so I just didn't remember it um but yeah so like that has been kind of unpleasant I could do without so much of that um but in general I'm still having a really fantastic time with this book I find it so gripping and like I'm somebody who like I'm a character focused reader anyway so it's not unusual that I would be really invested in a book that is very character heavy but I think this book is a good example of how being a character focused story or being a story that is in some ways more not even slow paced but like very deliberately paced like you know there is building tension and there is like a ton of like really interesting plot and politics happening but like it's definitely not fast paced you know so even with books like that it's like they can still be like incredible page turners because like I am like flying through this book like much faster than I even thought I would um because I just I care about these characters I want things to turn out well for them I want to know what's going to happen to them and yeah I'm just really liking this obviously and I don't remember how much I talked about this in a previous check-in but I am also really liking some of the side characters um like one of my favorites is Umagat who is this um he he's just such an interesting character and I really like him I think he's very well written um yeah I continue to think that the world building and like all of the cultural aspects and religious aspects and like political stuff I think all of that is just worked in really seamlessly to the story I think I will do my last sort of like check-in slash wrap-up just after I finish the book. Hello everybody, I am back with my final check-in. I have finished The Curse of Chalion. This was so good. I have so many thoughts and feelings about it and I'm gonna try to keep this wrap-up section mostly to things that I have not mentioned already because all of what I was saying before still stands. I am so impressed at the way the plot came together in this book and I was saying before how it is in a lot of ways a character focused story but like there is stuff happening like the the story like the plot of this book is so gripping like the way that these characters are having to make plans and adapt and make hard choices um like these big political things that are happening there's sort of like a mystery element there's a big curse element like there's a lot going on and yes it is through the lens of these characters rather than like big dramatic battle scenes or something um for the most part but that doesn't make it uninteresting to me like I thought the plot was just the way that it interconnected all these different plot threads and character things like the way everything came together at the end is just masterful to me I was so impressed I also continued to love the world and the setting and I loved the themes um like I was talking before about how much I was enjoying the the way the book was building up like the religion and the cultural elements and like all of these different um these different parts of the world and one of my favorite things about this book ended up being the like theology of it like it was just fascinating I loved the way this book talked about free will and how that interacts with belief I just thought that was very very cool and very well written like there are some quotes in here that I just I love and I think I'm gonna keep thinking about um so thematically I really love what this book did I mentioned already that the ending is fantastic and actually like I had been thinking most of the time that I was reading this that this was this would probably be a 4.5 stars um because I was loving it but there were a couple of little things here or there that I'm like well I don't think that was done like as well as the other things I don't know if I want to if I can give it like a full five stars but like the ending was so good that I'm like I don't know maybe this is a five <laughs> Um, I haven't decided yet so it's either gonna be a four and a half or a five stars. I love like the side characters, I love the main characters, I think that the antagonists while infuriating are written in a way that is very interesting and compelling without trying to without them like almost like taking over the story in a way so to sum up um yeah characterization great world building great um I loved the themes I thought those were done really well I found this a very engrossing read like it is a bit of a longer book um but I I was so wrapped up in it I cared about these characters I wanted to see what was going to happen um yeah I just thought this was incredibly well done um as I said before the only things that I didn't so much like or didn't 100% work for me I should say um is number one the writing I overall really really liked it but I think that there was just a tiny bit 
too much almost like too much of the stylistic choices i don't know how to describe it because it's not overly flowery and it's not like dense or confusing but there's just a little thing about it that kept it from flowing as smoothly as I, I would have wanted it to. And the other thing I mentioned is there were some aspects of this that were just gross. <laughs> um, and I know that is like a very, very subjective thing to say about a book, but like it made parts of the reading experience, I think, more unpleasant than than they needed to be or than like we were supposed to find them. And it also, I think, contributed to um, some character relationships not pulling me in as much as I wanted to because I was distracted by how like unpleasant and like the just like other parts of this were and like descriptions of that and everything um and it ends up being a pretty significant plot element so it's not like one scene where it's like oh that's gross and then you can move on um so yeah those are the only things that kind of like didn't 100 percent hit for me but in general this was fantastic mariana you did an amazing job picking for me um and i was actually talking to mariana right after finishing this like minutes after i finished and she was saying how she thinks i'm gonna enjoy the rest of the series as well and I can't wait. I'm very excited. Let me know if you guys have read this one, if you're interested in it. I definitely am excited to read more from this author, like the series, but also other things that she's written. There's like other books of hers that I know I want to try. So this was a great experience. As I said, could be 4.5 or 5 stars. I will decide. But um, yeah, don't forget to check out Mariana and her channel and her videos that she's done for this project. I can't wait to see hers. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you soon with another video, and I hope you love the next book you read. Bye!